lot of different companies. So more as a business strategy rather than from a research point of view or from either technical or, or, or other points of view. So uh, just to give you a bit, a bit of background, uh, I'm currently a consultant with, with Lego, Lego Group, the toy company. And I manage their online portfolio of $100 million plus. Um, and I not only work on SEO, I work on all revenue streams like paid search, email, affiliate, and so on. So. And before this, I, I used to be consultant with Verizon, Deluxe, 48 or Pink, so with a lot of different companies in the retail side. Um, and I'll be, so this is, you know, everybody has an opinion on SEO. <laughs> is there anybody who does not have an opinion on SEO? <laughs> So, so I'm, I'm okay uh, if, if you don't agree with me or if you have a completely different point of view, that, that's fine, you can bring it out, that's totally fine. So when we're talking about future of SEO, you know, it, it's really hard to say what is in the future uh, if you, uh, without knowing where we're coming from. And, and the whole internet, the search, Google, they are so new. If, if you look at the past, like how Google came along with like 98, 99, and that's barely 14 years, and, and AdWords, which brings like majority of their revenue stream, so we're looking at the Google history here, that came out only in 2001, 2002 time frame. Uh, in fact, the first major uh, search uh, from a holistic point of view was universal search, which came out like four years ago, 2007, I believe. And, and, and since then, like we have so many things that Google keeps on doing that we don't even realize almost to the tune of like 500 changes a year, which is a lot. Uh, but, but they are, again, Google is, is in the business of delivering the best, the most relevant results. They're, they're not perfect by any means. And there are lots of smart people, including people in this room, who know how to fool that system. So, so if you are to run a business, you, know, you, you need to look at the bigger picture. You know, is there a better way of spending my money? If I'm a blogger, if I'm a uh, non-profit, if I'm a small business owner, where should I spend my money? Where should I be focusing? So a couple of things. Um, if you look at, uh, and I'm sure everybody has uh, an opinion as to which are the more important ranking factors on Google. Whether it is the on-page SEO, page rank, anchor text, links. Uh, over, the, over the last 10 years, we are seeing that the, individual importance of each of those elements has been moving up or down. So we know now uh, that the page rank is not such a big factor as it used to be like <coughs> seven, eight years ago. At the same time, we are seeing that the user experience is becoming more and more important right there in the yellow. Uh, again, this is not from Google. This is based on experts that you know you can look at uh, search engine strategies or a lot of other publications. Uh, these are based on their opinion, expert opinion. So we know that the algorithm constantly refines itself over a period of time. Looking further, we can see at uh, some of the other uh, data that I could get. Since 98, you know, how search engines are becoming more and more refined. Whether we're talking about the paid links, we're talking about how people are, are uh, spamming the system, uh, they're buying links, and, and they're still doing it, by the way, and, and Google is, catching most of them, but not everybody. So Google is consistently refining its algorithm to bring the best results out there. So that is what we have seen over the last 10 years, um, and, and we have a long way to go. Yes, ma'am? Can you make it a little bit bigger so we can see it in the back? Unfortunately, this is the, the Can I move this I card have. back, or will everything fall into pieces? Okay. I'll, I'll post it on my website if you want to download tonight, I'll do that. So, so we are seeing that Google is consistently refining its search results and in which direction it is going. And we are seeing consi consistently it is taking out the spammers, people who are trying to fool the system, people who are buying links. That doesn't mean that link buying has stopped. A lot of companies do it including some of the companies that I worked in the past, they still do it, and Google still hasn't penalized them. And, and it's still, for a lot of people, it, that is still a valid, uh, a, a viable business strategy. 
Now, coming to, from there, from the, uh, from the uh, mid 2000s to now, like 2011 and 2012, which is very important because of the panda and the penguin releases, the two that people most talk about, which significantly changed the search results and penalized quite a bit of people. In fact, the first one I'm going to talk about the panda, which was February of last year. That is uh, an important milestone in terms of how the results are being served. Because Google's algorithm actually, Google came up with this press release, like how to, and, and you can look at all of their press releases because Panda has so many versions, 1.0, 2.0, and so, so on and so forth. Every time they come up with how to find the high quality sites. We are in the business of finding high quality sites. That's what Google's business is. And most relevant answers to the queries people are typing in. Further going in, what we saw in the first release is 12% of all the search queries. So 12% at a global scale, that's a big deal. So 12%, so, so essentially identifying people who are in the business of uh, page, uh, creating page view generating machines. They, they have networks where they can, they can uh, they can get people on Craigslist at ten dollars an hour or even lower rates, and they can write some some articles for them. And, and over a period of time, they got a lot of content. And if you if if you scale it up, there's a lot of traffic that you can easily generate by following these tactics. And they're not uh, providing any quality to the uh, to the queries that people are looking for. So this was the pandas uh, panda release was the one that took out most of those uh, search results of those sites where people were just doing it for the business of getting Google traffic and nothing else. Again, we saw that they again uh, updated that version that, that again brought in better results, again 2% on top of that. And, and as I said, Google, in this particular release in May, I'm just looking at verbatim, I copied the Google's press release here from the Webmaster uh, blog where Google is uh, defining what, what is a quality site. This is the first time that I've been following Google for a long time, but this is the first time that I saw that Google has uh, most clearly defined what it considers as a high quality site. We know Google, everybody has been saying content is king for a long, long time, but that was not really the case. So when you look at their press release, looking at, okay, what is a high quality site? So here you see all those uh, text in the back um, that is verbatim copied, verbatim copied from their press release, and there are like 25 of them. So I haven't copied all of them, but maybe 10 of them here. And, and when you look at it, what is it behind? Would you trust the information presented in this article? We're talking about building a website, building a content, building a story, a video. That has got trust element in it. So that is more important for Google. And, and there are, uh, trust me, there are ways, there are metrics that you can use uh, to identify the trust element. And if you are at Google scale, you can definitely do that. Furthermore, uh, some of the other things like, uh, you know, who's the author? Who's writing this story? Who's producing this video? And, and there, so whether you want to read, is Paul Krugman's story more important than somebody else on, for example, Huffington Post? So the author is very important. That's what Google is telling me. Domain authority. Like, if you are expert in a particular area, people trust you. And, and there are, I, I'm noticing, like, this is actually one of the mom bloggers. I took the, her website. Uh, it's called tickjunkie.com. And she probably gets somewhere close to uh, a million hits a month. That's pretty big. That's a big deal. A million hits a month on a, on a blog, on a website. Um, and, and she is a mom blogger. She, this is not a corporate, this is not a big company. She's a mom blogger. She's a domain expert in uh, how to host kids' birthday parties. <laughs> the how, many, how many kids does she have? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know exactly how many she has. <laughs> But, but she's really good at creating theme parties. If you want to have one for yourself, you know, go to her site. <laughs> You'll be my first guest. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the 
printables for, for the do-it-yourself, uh, arts and crafts at home. She has completely risen up from the ground like in the last five years to be an authority on hosting birthday parties for kids. So that is amazing. Comprehensive story. So Google is saying, does this article describe both sides of the story? Is it, is it complete story? These are the signals that Google is looking for in terms of this is what Google describes as a high quality website. So think again if you are running a, a, a blog or a small business, the kind of stories you want to put out there. Because this is the most explicit uh, signal that I'm reading from Google in terms of what is considered <coughs> quality content, quality website. Uh, share. Uh, we have seen like Facebook, Twitter, uh, and tons of other social networks explode. And, and if you look at a lot of the people, like, this is uh, from a website, uh, again, one of the parent bloggers, uh, very creative, very funny, and describing you know, the, the issues that uh, parents have to go through when the children are teething. So he, he's really built up this infographic or instructional diagram, and, and he gets tons of SEO traffic on this one. He's got 584 Facebook shares for this one. And you have to be creative to build this kind of content. And, and he has been consistently building this kind of uh, infographic or instructional diagrams. And he's being, now he's, he's being covered in Huffington Post. So he is regularly contributing in Huffington Post at this time. He is really good in, in taking a, a small, uh, like small issues like you know how to parent uh, or uh, challenges raising a kid and put into, into an instructional diagram that is funny, creative, that people like to share. And if this is being shared by a lot of people, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or somewhere else, uh, it must be good content. Same again, um, the page layout algorithm update that came out January probably this year that talks about the user experience explicitly. Uh, is the page load taking too much time? Are you putting, too, so if you're running, anybody on the blog running affiliate ads, are there too many affiliate ads on the top of the page that distract the user? Are there too many ads? Since then, uh, we've seen um, uh, this year the Penguin update, which is essentially to take out the spam. And, and you know, everybody has a different definition of SEO. It's keyword stuffing, uh, tags, or getting links from somewhere else. Uh, the more links you get, the better it is. Uh, but at some point, uh, especially in this release, you can see that Google took out those link forms, the penalized. So uh, approximately 3% overall impact of this particular release. But again, as you look here, Google is taking, beating out people who are trying to fool the system. But that does not mean that Google has taken out everybody who is fooling the system. There are still very, very successful people who are getting traffic through lots of shady means. Yes, ma'am. Um, what about uh, long uh, domain names that redirect? For example, let's say you're a small furniture maker um, and you buy up a bunch of domain names, uh, small furniture maker, Massachusetts, small furniture maker. Um, has Google penalized those um, <coughs> types of searches? So essentially, the way I'm understanding your question is buying the perfectly named domain name. Is that well, right? Yeah. And let's say let's say you really you're trying to you're trying to build up your SEO by trying to figure out any iteration of something that somebody's looking for a small furniture maker in Massachusetts. So you buy up ten domain names that all redirect to your primary site, which might be Walpole Tables. Have they changed the? Um, it used to be you weren't penalized for that. Have they changed that? So, so that is more technical uh, question, uh, but I would still answer that. Um, domain name is still very important. Uh, it should not be so important in my opinion, but you know the exact match domain names are still very important. Uh, but again, I would advise you, uh, if your business is selling furniture, mm -hmm. um, are you better off building uh, beautiful pictures and videos of your furniture and how those look up in, in, in a perfect setting for your customers? Or are you trying to, who's your customer? Is Google your customer or the people? So if you want to attract the right kind of leads, you want to have the quality pictures about your furniture so that people, the right people will come to you. So it, it depends on you how you want to proceed. Any 
in terms of future, so I was looking at uh, Marissa Myers, who's the VP of search at Google, um, at her, uh, in one of the interviews, and she said that coming up with elegant, fitting, and relevant solutions made the challenges of mobility, modes, media, personalization, location, socialization, and language will take decades. Uh, what that means is it, we are, in terms of search engine revolution, we are still at a point where, where you can compare it to like, you know, uh, Isaac Newton getting hit by the apple. We are very, very early in, in the search engine revolution at this time. Um, I don't know what will happen tomorrow or the next two years or three years, uh, but it will get, in, get become increasingly better and better results will be served. How that, which elements, whether Facebook will be more important or Twitter will be more important, I don't know that. But, but we, we have a direction, this is more of a direction that I'm talking about here, which direction we are going into. So th there is, in three years, five years, the Google algorithm will be much more better in terms of penalizing those people who are breaking the system. But at the same time, it will be better because of its scale, because of the amount of data that it can collect about user behavior and measuring the quality of content that it can pick the best content to serve the user needs. Uh, we know, uh, and there's nothing new here, uh, mobile is going to take over the desktop, everybody knows that. And that means uh, more searches through mobile than the desktop. And, and we all know that uh, the, the search intent in mobile is usually local. It's within a certain radius. So that is going to be, uh, so, so nowadays people have talk, started talking about local SEO. So if you own a store, small business, uh, you want, you're talking about local SEO. When people are searching for your pizza store in Boston, you want to be <coughs> number one there. So local SEO is essentially a, a spin on location, and that is becoming increasingly more important, as I said. In terms of social context, I think we are still very, very early there. Facebook has really changed the world. There's a lot of conversation that is happening. The recommendations on Facebook are probably much more important than what you get on the search results, because you're, you're connected to your friends, people you trust. And, and how that will be incorporated into, into the Google search results is, is still in the works. But it is being taken into consideration in some way or form. And, and, uh, and if you want to, the Google bot is in the business of serving better results, more relevant results, then the social context is much more important. We will not know whether it's Twitter or the Google Plus or Pinterest or Facebook, which of those will be more important and what will be that exact formula, but we know all those elements are important. And if we are in, in the business of building better businesses, better websites, better blogs, better content, uh, we need to make sure that our content and websites are present on those social platforms that people are hanging out with. Uh, one thing I'm noticing, uh, just as some of the examples I gave, I gave about um, the child, the teething problem with the child, the instructional diagrams, and, and the tip junkie. That, that more creativity is being rewarded. I'm seeing it for the last two, three years. Uh, if you are creative in terms of creating content, uh, you will be rewarded. You are, if, if you're not, you know, there might be some other issues, but pe more and more bloggers are being rewarded for creating um, quality content. So if you can be creative, uh, solving a problem, creating a story, either in video, uh, pictures, or some other format, or, or something really a different spin on the same story, you will, so, so you have to create a differentiated content. And if you can create a differentiated content, differentiated website, uh, you should be happier that you will get more and more traffic out of Google. I have a question to that. How do you measure your creativity being more rewarded? How do you see that? So I am seeing, in terms of the mom bloggers that I'm fairly entrenched in, and a lot of my friends are mom bloggers, so I'm seeing a lot of them rising to the top in terms of being successful in, in, in becoming influencers in their niche, mm -hmm. in terms of bringing out their stories, uh, whether it's about um, Halloween, uh, putting a really nice creative spin on Halloween. Um, so. Or, or if, if you have seen that Nummies Bra, um, that's a Canadian company that came up with a video a couple of years ago. Um, 
It's a beautiful video. Uh, you can go uh, search on YouTube called Namizra and you M M I E S. And and essentially, they, they put together a bunch of women in a room and they created a focus group um, study with them. And at the end of the session, they asked them like, how, how do you feel being a mom? And everybody wrote it down. I don't know if you saw it. Um, they, they wrote it down. All the all the women in the room, they wrote it down. What they felt, what it felt like being a mom. And, and then they, they built a video out of that, and that has close to over a million hits. And they never ever talked about the bra at all. It's about what it means being a mom. And th that was uh, I thought one of the creative ways of, of gener connecting with the consumer while not pitching a product, and at the same time getting traffic. Okay. And there are tons of examples like that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I just wanted to add that for news sites that publish like AP or Reuters stories, um, they actually get hurt because they're duplicating content in the sense that the same lead or the same headline gets run on like you know eight different news websites, and it actually hurts their rankings. So in terms of creativity, that's also something else when it's original content and you're not reusing the same beats, the same sentences. Is that that's another version of creativity? So, uh, and I, I strongly encourage uh, to look at Google's Macy's release in terms of what is high quality website. And they talk about what is differentiated content, what is original content there. So, I would post it on my blog as well. Uh, media Matters, uh, as I was talking about uh, the universal search that came out in 2007. Uh, we, we have barely scratched the surface there. Uh, I'm not seeing a tons of. Uh, uh, rich media serving up on the on Google search uh, ser search engine results page. Uh, I believe there is tons of more that needs to be done in terms of, you know, the stories have to be better than just plain piece uh, text HTML kind of story, uh, video uh, images, and there are many other ways that you can use to build your stories. And and we and there is a lot of room there to grow in terms of being differentiated, being creative, being original. Uh, and in terms of just the search engine results page, how Google search serves those 10 results, the blue links, uh, that itself uh, is, is, uh, can, be, um, uh, can be more creative in terms of, because people have bigger screens now. It doesn't have to be just 10 links in, in a static order. It can be verticalized. It can be a whole sm uh, smashing, uh, array of pictures, it could be like a collage. There are so many ways that you can serve the 10 results on the Google search in your page. So media matters, and richer media, I, I, I believe, is still to be explored. In terms of, you know, um, um, as I said, I work with Lego, I manage their online business. I work with a lot of search agencies. And what I'm seeing is, um, today the search today, 2011, 2012, search within the business is evolving. It's no more um, you know, some technical guys or developers working in a corner. Uh, the social and the content that is being, being ruled by, overtaken by the marketing communications and the PR folks. So, so, the, so the search folks, the SEO folks need to work with them and, and, have, uh, and, and work in tandem and ha have to align with the overall business strategy as I was answering the question of furniture. Uh, if you tell somebody, uh, your boss, that you know I'm going, I recommend buying ten different domains with different furniture names, and so I need to get funding for that, versus giving them an idea that you know I'm going to create this video, I'm going to hire this freelancer to create this beautiful image image of different kinds of furniture that we own, and then ask for funding, you will get a very different response. So, so the. SEO strategy is not in, in an island by itself anymore. It has to be part of your overall business goal. So, so you need to work with your content. Uh, so one thing I'm seeing is, and, and I'm, I'm getting increasingly frustrated with, is search agencies offer technical solutions. They are not offering content solutions. Uh, so, so you have to go out, or maybe there are some full service agencies that that offer both technical and content solutions. So you have to go out of your way and, and hire somebody, whether it is bloggers or freelancers or some agency, to create that content. 
because that is very important. You are better off spending, optimizing your existing average level content, or are you better off creating content that is going to be useful for the customer? So, so if you're talking about a wholesale solution, you need to be working with your PR and marketing teams to create better and more useful content for, for your customers. I just want to go back and give you a quick example here. This one, this is a Nook video that came out like uh, three years ago. And when, when Barnes & Noble came up with the, with the black and white Nook, if people recall, it had some issues and uh, people were looking how to fix this particular issue. And on Barnes & Noble website, there is a, a FAQ, 10 point FAQ, which is right here. And that's it. You can be creative, you can use different forms of content to solve the same problem. And one of the bloggers actually took those 10 steps and built a video out of it. And that video has, you can see, over 70,000 hits. And, and this is like, you know, we're talking about a small, small time blogger, not, not like a professional or a big company. And, and you should go read the, the amount of commentary that people have written there. Thank you, thank you for putting it, because it was so difficult reading through all those gigantic steps. It was so difficult. So thank you for putting it up. So, so, so you can be creative in terms of creating different kinds of videos, different kinds of medias aligning with the overall business strategy. At the end of the day, it is about your customer, about, about the reader that you're trying to sell or you're trying to place. With that, uh, I'm open to questions and again, uh, you know, I don't know what will happen tomorrow. This is coming from my experience and then we'll see what will happen and how things will evolve. And please uh, come to the podium uh, if you want to ask questions so that everybody can hear. Uh, this question is about tags and WordPress. And um, sometimes when I use a theme, it doesn't have any place to put um, tags on pages, so I get a plug-in. And um, I've been using simple tags, which is really nice. And then um, I discovered another plug-in that I really like called um, SEO Pack, which is, um, it allows you to put a description and it has a place for tags as well. So now I'm confused. Uh, do I put the tags in both places, or is Google going to think there's too many tags, or do I just put the tags in one place, or you know, what what do you recommend in that? So, so um, first to clarify that I'm not a technical expert. At the same time, uh, I understand what tags mean. Uh, so my question to you would be: Is tags going to help your customers? Do the customers search your pages by the tags that you think that you want to name by? So, so you have to ask yourself: Is it going to help your customer? Or you're trying to get more Google traffic. That's not what I meant. What I meant is, is it going to get penalized by having tags in two places? Uh, well, if they are, if they are identical tags, yeah. uh, then essentially tags is what it means is creating another page. You're diluting your page page value there. You're creating more pages on your website. So, so no, it will not be penalized. That is a short answer that you're looking for. We have a question here, right? I was just going to say that in, I use SEO Pack, and I just put in a lot of the area codes for people who might be looking for my content, looking at the mobile, the mobile direction. That's a good place to look at the SEO localization thinking about. Um, that's hard for me to say what impact it will have, but you can certainly try that, uh, creating more pages that you, you think might serve local needs. question is about uh, hosting international websites. So we have a travel site that's uh, targeted to the UK. So within Google, I have it pointed to the UK. But we have about 60% of our users are from the US. But when you search it in Google, um, you don't necessarily find it in a lot of searches because Google sees us as having the UK as a priority. I wondered if the big companies, do you have a philosophy of how you handle that? And, and if you have foreign language websites, does it see that as a duplicate site, uh, how that works? So the international uh, nationalization of web the website is uh, fairly complex uh, because Google looks for that local. You, you want to be global and local at the same time. 
So, so where is your IP address? Is the site hosted in that country where people are searching? In London. Uh, is, is it is is that uh, and and the, and the language within your site is it the U.S. English versus the U.K. English? Do you have uh, local links coming from U.K. pointing to your U.K. website, or are they coming from the U.S. pointing to your U.K. website? Uh, so there are a lot of local or slash international factors that go into consideration. What's your take on developing nations going mobile? They totally skipped um, desktop and computers, and search is a lot different on mobile. What's your take on that? Well, uh, the search, like, uh, search today is the number one navigation tool, whether we're talking about desktop, so I'm talking about now the site search. So, so whether it is the desktop or mobile, search is the primary navigation tool. And, and, you know, good for them if they're skipping the whole desktop generation, you know, because they can't afford to have those hardwired Ethernet cables running all over the country. Uh, but, but there is a different way to serve uh, uh, the mobile search, which has a very, very strong local uh, nature in the query itself. And because, you, you, you know, in those countries, I'm assuming it is still not broadband. So, so you are limited by the bandwidth there. So the speed, the way the search is served, serve, those factors are going to be more and more important. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I just have a follow-up question to what you said, that search is the primary navigation tool. Are you talking <coughs> about people searching for information by going to Google, or are you talking about within a site? Is there Both ways. Is Both. it true that most people navigate a site by search? Rather that is than correct. Use? There are some stats that roughly 82% people on a site use site search to find what they're looking for rather than using the standard navigation. Thank you. Um, earlier in your slide, um, you had like a four lists of things not to, like um, like farming and stuff. One of them was hidden content. What did you mean by hidden content? Oh, hidden content, that's very old technique. Uh, in fact, I met somebody here today during lunch who, who started that practice a long time ago. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so hidden context, uh, content is like, you, you put all the content in, in like white. Oh, like so that, CSS to cover it up. Yeah, so and, and cover it with CSS so that human beings can't see it, but Google can see it. Oh, okay. Uh, right. And they think that Google is full, they, they won't realize it, okay. but Google, figure out it after a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, meta tags and all of that, that falls in that same category as hidden content that's pretty much extinct now? Uh, no, it doesn't fall in the same category. Meta tags are there to, meta tags by definition, it's definition, talking description about the data that you have there. Meta tags should still be used. So it's still a relevant it's meta -tags algorithm in, in for the Google? There is some some uh, weightage to meta tags. Uh, title tags are being considered very, very important. So meta tags is, is the that is what they described in the HTML coding. That is the right way to code your pages. Yes, sir. Hi. What is um you mentioned before about um, paid uh, links and that type of thing? What are your thoughts on doing off-page optimization with link building and that type of thing? So, so th that is good. Uh, people. Uh, Link, essentially an off-site link validates that you are a good site. So, so Google uses that as a signal to uh, consider your site as a quality site. Uh, at the same time, uh, you have to be careful how you do it. How do you write like that? There's a lot of different ways of creating a backlink off-page. What do you, you know, I understand, you know, some of the link farms and that type of thing, but what do you, what do you think are good ways of creating um, links off-page? So you want to start very legitimate. Uh, if you have a business, you might want to see who's your partners, who are customers, and reaching out to them because they, they have a valid reason to link to you. Engaging with the bloggers, uh, engaging with anybody who uses your products or services in some form, they have a reason to link to you. N not some no-name company out of uh, Alabama, for example, right? Uh, so if you're running a company in Boston that is relevant to Massachusetts, you definitely want to reach out to your partners and customers, and anybody that you're related to, somehow. And, and that might be a good start. Do you do, like, for the work that you do for LEGO, do you do active link building like that or beyond that type of? 
No, uh, Lego is the, so I'm not speaking on behalf of Lego at this time, by the way. Right, right, I'm just speaking from a personal <laughs> capacity. Uh, so Lego as a brand in itself, it, it's such a huge brand that you know it doesn't have to rely on the search, SEO and all that stuff. It, right. it, it, people love Lego, no matter what they do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and Lego does not, uh, you know, Lego is such a cult brand that people search for Lego. So if you're searching for Lego, Lego will be on the top all the time. Um, but you know, when it is uh, unbranded terms, that is where the SEO becomes more important, when you have a long tail of uh, inventory. When you're referring to trust through your presentation, um, I got the sense that you were referring to it from a content perspective, but are there also things regarding certifications and things like that with regard to trust, you know, SSL certifications and things like that that also help determine, you know, how Google's going to define that as a trustworthy site? I would think yes. Uh, so if you are an e-commerce site where people put in credit card, and if you, your site is not HTTPS, it's not secure, people will think twice, and Google would know that it's not a secured site, so putting credit card probably is not a good idea. So, so that is one way of looking at it. At the same time, trust could be defined by many other ways. So if it is PBS Kids, for example, I'm totally fine with my little ones watching a show on pbskids.com because I trust that site it's for a long period of time versus some other sites that I would not, I don't know what will pop up there. Mm -hmm. So that is how I tr say trust. At the same time, uh, if there is a story, right, it's a political story, economic story, whatever it is, who's the author, who's writing it? Uh, and and who's, so, so the name behind the story also matters. So there are so many different ways that you can define trust. I'd like to have your take on one situation. Um, after Penguin, I had two sites go up in the rankings. And one on, both on, they all landed on page one. I had another site that was on page one that disappeared. It disappeared in broad, in broad match. It disappeared in broad, an exact match, it stayed on page one. And I'm trying to get a bead on what that means. And then incidentally, for that keyword, I had videos that moved into the rankings, and they're moving up, on the same keyword that my home page, which was optimized on page, disappeared. That is very hard for me to answer, knowing just the facts that you gave me. Um, so, so you have to look at a global picture, you know, and. You are not the only one who got affected for those keywords. Your competitors who are in the same business went up and down at the same time. So, so you have to look at the relative, you have to do a relative comparison there. What, what is the quality of their content versus your content? So, so it's hard for me to answer that question just knowing those facts. All right. Um, we have no more questions. Thank you very much for coming to the session.